welcome to the Monday edition of Dividend Cafe. It is a very special day because I am recording for the first time in our brand new, beautiful offices on 6th Avenue here in New York City. Uh, it's really just been a very special day for us. I know a lot of you don't care. I don't blame you. If you're just here to get the market info, get the news, get the economic analysis, I can understand why you don't care where we go to work every day. But for those who are clients and are a little bit more connected into the TBG family, it's been a very special day and we're excited uh, to be here in, in the written Dividend Cafe. We have some pictures and video link and things like that. Uh, but if you're in the area in between 53rd and 54th Street, the whole city block there on 6th Avenue, um, just a few blocks away from Central Park, is our new home. Uh, we will be here for 10 years uh, minimum, and I'm a long-term thinker, so I can imagine it will be much longer than that. And in the meantime, the markets did not sleep for us to start our new day in the, in the new office. And in fact, uh, it was another rally day um, across the board. All 11 sectors in the S&P 500 were up on the day. The um, technology sector and communication services were the leader. And I think they were exactly the same on the day, 1.44% uh, for both. Uh, but the worst performing sector was consumer staples, not surprising, a more defensive sector. And it was up 0.32%. Uh, the bond market was up a tiny bit. The 10-year was down. Uh, the yield down 1.7 basis points to 3.87%. So you have lower interest rates, higher PE ratios, uh, getting ready to wrap up completely earning season. Um, what ended up being a, a pretty solid earning season with a little bit of hiccups in the middle. And the other element about the market right now is that the dollar had dropped and the market was down big at the beginning of August. And now the dollar has dropped further and the market is up quite a bit. And this is sort of a little microcosm of a point I make from time to time, but I want to reiterate for you now. Um, I've never seen anything that gets a more convenient scapegoat than people saying, oh, well, the dollar's down, it's hurting the market. Or the dollar's up, it's hurting the market. The dollar is down, it's helping the market. The dollar is up, it's helping the market. It's, it's either an intellectual schizophrenia, an economic idiocy, a little bit of both, or sometimes people are rightly at attributing the fact that there are times where a down dollar is good for markets and times where an up dollar is good for markets. That's not generally the case within a two-week period that it is both and. But it's certainly there are points at which it can be both and, and and throughout history for very economically fundamental reasons. That's not what's going on now. So people in that currency world often just don't know what they're talking about. And I have to listen to them and you don't. So I'm just sort of projecting onto you a little bit. Um, speaking of things I have to listen to sometimes, I did, <laughs> I did get a kick out of... Uh, Something Larry McDonald shared, who's an analyst, um, wrote a book on Lehman Brothers years ago that I reviewed and enjoyed and 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 puts out a, a lot of different analysis on markets. And just, so just from time to time, I like to capture some of the stuff that he will share with me. Um, Bitcoin three years ago was at 59,000. Today it closed at 59,000. Over the last 10 years, it has had a drop of 82%, 58%, 65%, and 75%. Four monumental drops over the last 10 years. Of course, it's up huge from 10 years ago. And three years ago, it's dead flat. This has all the characteristics of something that we would refer to as not a store of value. Maybe it's a great speculative trade. Maybe it's a terrible speculative trade. Maybe it's going much higher. Maybe it's going much lower. You can think whatever you want about all those things. But the words store of value, probably not appropriate here. Uh, there is a link in Dividend Cafe today for an article that our very own Matthew Gregory wrote. Matt is our director of our planning department here in New York City. And the SECURE Act which Congress had passed and then did a second version of it in 2022, a SECURE Act 2.0 passed by Congress, has a lot of rules, restrictions, and, and changes around retirement accounts 
and distributions from retirement accounts. And Matt has written a piece that you'll find at DividendCafe.com that I think is excellent, summarizing recent IRS rulings, guidelines, clarifications about that. We want to give you more information uh, in, from our tax side, our risk department, um, estate planning, financial planning. So expect other members of the Brain Trust at TBG besides me and Brian on the investment side to contribute. And if you're laughing right now about me being part of the Brain Trust, I don't think it's very funny. Okay, what else? I do have a little video link. I was on Fox Business earlier today talking about some of the policy proposals that Vice President Harris did release over the weekend. I, I already referenced some of them in the Friday Dividend Cafe. I'm going to be doing more writing on it. There may be more meat on the bone coming throughout the convention this week. Um, I'm a little politically surprised that some of the first elaboration of economic agenda centered around price controls uh, with groceries and very explicitly so, but there's some critique of it that I uh, provide and you're welcome to check out um, in the link. Uh, the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index is back up to the level that it was when the Fed began tightening. So the optimism had dropped, not, not brutally like during COVID, but, but uh, meaningfully uh, throughout the period of Fed tightening. And it's now come back to where it started. I think it's worth pointing that out. Uh, on the housing side, Friday, we got the data on housing starts down 6.8% in July, down 16% on the year. That's with multifamily and single family together. The single family was worse in July, but multifamily helped over the last year. Multifamily is even a little worse than single family. So again, new starts are way down. The differences were not really overbuilt in our country with multifamily. We have a lot of replacement building to do, though, but we are not overbuilt in total supply. We're way underbuilt. Excuse me, we're not underbuilt in total supply with multi. We are obviously underbuilt in a single family. Uh, so here we are with the Fed, 72% chance right now of a quarter point cut in September, which means a 28% chance of a half point cut, 0% chance of no cut. Um, I think that those numbers may change when the August jobs report comes out. If it's really bad, you may get a half point cut in September. But I want to reiterate, Peter Buchvar said it this morning, but I've been saying it for a few weeks. Peter and I are on the same page on this one. It's just ridiculous to care if you get a quarter point or half point when the market's pricing in 100 basis points by the end of the year and 200 basis points by the end of next year. Who cares what the September versus November distribution of these rate cuts is? Uh, but again, two percentage points are expected to come out of the Fed funds rate from five and a half to three and a half percent by the end of 2025. Speaking of the Fed, Chairman Powell is speaking at Jackson Hole this weekend on Friday. The symposium begins Thursday. There's oftentimes a little drama that comes out of Jackson Hole. More often than not, there's not. But, you know, CNBC will be there and it'll be very serious and there'll be countdowns and you know, all the drama. And then we'll see what happens. Two different questions in the Ask TBG today. I'm going to send you to DividendCafe.com to check those out. Um, one of them dealing with whether or not I think there is systemic risk of the huge growth in the passive investment space. And then another one dealing with, um, uh, ba, 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 what was, I'm sorry, I'm pulling it up here. I wrote my answer to it this morning. Am I forgetting? Oh, the, um, the NASDAQ talking about its three-year return versus like a five-year return that's much better and whether or not there's cherry picking going on. And I make a much more important point about the range-bound market, I believe, that did start three years ago, not five years ago. So check that out. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. That's our Monday Dividend Cafe brought to you from our new spot in New York City. And we'll be back with you, our daily recap, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, one way or the other, I'm bringing you Dividend Cafe this Friday as well. More to come. Thanks so much for listening, watching, and reading the Dividend Cafe. Mm -hmm.